discussing tonight is what exactly data analysis or whatever data analytics really, really is. And I'm quite mindful of the fact that I've got a very diverse audience into this class. So some persons that are maybe experienced in the space, some other persons that are probably aspiring to be in the space as well. So let's go straight into our conversation for tonight as we talk about data analysis, data analytics. I like this quote. I really do like this quote. And I'm just going to start by talking about this quote as we get on with today. That information is the oil of the 21st century and analytics is a combustion engine. You know, so there's a general saying that and data is a new oil. So data information is the oil of the 21st century. But then the combustion engine is analytics. Because if you get all of the data, when you get all of the data, you still require very, very appropriate and relevant analytics to be able to get the value from it. And so today I'm going to talk about what data analysis really means. And then I'll just have a little quick chat about data visualization. I'll tell you about some of the skill set that is required, the toolkit that you need, the job trend, and then the journey to becoming a data analyst and enjoying what are the good things there. Yesterday's conversation was amazing. It was awesome. If you were in yesterday's session, can I see you type yes, 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 or why, 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 why in the chat? Let me just have an idea of people that were in yesterday's session because I'm not going to be talking about some of the very wonderful things that uh, our coach Chinda Chinda talked about yesterday. Yes, a couple of persons in the room were in the session yesterday, and I'm quite sure you've been lifted and you want to hear more. You want to say, yes, we're there yesterday. Let's see what's happening today. Okay, so today we're discussing specifically about data, about data analytics. Amazing. So I can see a very good number of the persons that are on this call, they were equally here yesterday, and I'm very confident that you won't be disappointed you're here today. I've enjoyed yesterday. Here you are again today. So let's talk about what exactly is data analysis. When we talk about somebody's a data analyst or somebody wants to become a data analyst, what does it mean? Data analysis is simply put, the process of your identifying, process of identifying or your cleaning, your transforming, your modeling, a particular data set. And the main thing why you're doing that is because you want to discover meaningful, useful information. Now, this information could be in the form of trends. You want to see a trend. Is it going up? Is it coming down? Is it remaining the same? This useful information could be in the form of patterns. Is it going up and coming down? Is there any seasonality in this thing? Is there any correlation? Is there any connection? between this particular situation and this other one. So these are some of the things that data analysis would really do. In, in one of my major projects that I've worked on as a data analyst was during the COVID-19 pandemic. And then we're looking at all of this data and trying to see, number one, what is the trend of the coronavirus infection in the UK? Are more persons getting contacted or less persons? Can we connect it with something? Is it because there was a major event, maybe an Olympic or a football game, and that is why there's a major spread in a particular location? Is there a pattern that we can see? That's generally what data analysis is, yeah? And in many space, it's very connected with business analysis, okay? So what's business analysis? Here you're using data analysis, data mining, and other analytic tools for you to be able to identify opportunities and for you to be able to make data-driven decisions. So you will notice that they are very connected. But when we come to business analysis, it's just you're doing business or you're working or doing anything commercially. And before now, you're using lots of your experience or what you think God's feeling to be able to take decision. But right now, you don't want to do that. You want to do what the data says. The data is the ultimate in this business. You don't just want to do what you feel like. No, I, I think this is what I feel like, or I think this is what I was told to do, but this is what the data says. Like somebody will always say that, in God I trust, but every other person, you must bring the data. So every other person, before you tell me this or that, I should do this or that, or this is the decision, or that is the decision, let's 
look at the data. And that is what business analysis really is. And when we do all of these things, how do we present it? The data will craft this into a kind of story. We we'll analyze the data, and then it's going to support our decision making. So that generally is what we're talking about today as per data analysis. So now it's divided into a couple of categories like descriptive analytics, prescriptive analytics, predictive analytics, cognitive as well. But I won't go into all of those different areas for today's sessions. But usually we'll go in more specific in all that in our training. I know I've talked about this, but just as a way of emphasizing what's the importance in today's world. Number one, data-driven decisions. I'm always going to make example to coronavirus, okay? Because everybody in this room experienced that. So governments were taking decisions whether or not there should be lockdown. How were these decisions made? It was through the data. So they were looking at the data and say, there's been a trend of the virus. Too many persons are contacting the virus. Our hospitals have been overstretched. If we continue, then there will be trouble more than we're experiencing now. So that's a decision. It's what we call data-driven decision, where businesses and organizations are increasingly relying on data to make these informed decisions, these strategic decisions, not just by what they feel like, but by looking at the data, getting these analysts to crush the data, crush the numbers, and tell them, what do you want me to do? Say I want to invest, for instance, where should I invest? Now, there's one of the use cases that some of the people learning in our training center, what we give to them. So I give them an Airbnb data set, and then I give them a use case. I say, assume Intel Navis is a property investment company, and then we want to invest somewhere in the United States. Tell us where you want us to invest, and now you want us to invest. So I give them an Airbnb data set, very huge data set and very dirty data set, to be honest. And the idea was for them to be able to analyze the data and tell us, what do you want us to do? How should we do it? That is exactly what we're talking about in data analysis. Okay? So some of the applications which we generally will look at in the space, business analysis. You want to look at the data to be able to drive your business, to be able to make strategic decisions, and to be able to optimize operations in what you're doing. And not only that, not only that, you would notice that one of the things that you do is predictive modeling. So we've seen some of the common applications when we discuss analytics, yeah? So data analysis is what we're discussing today. And in all of this talk, we can see what exactly are the benefits. Apart from informed decisions, improved business strategies, predictive insight, efficiency, you'll be able to optimize all of that. It gives you competitive edge. And obviously, you'll be able to identify new opportunities for your business. Now, let me look at this use case. I really, really like this slide. This use case is very, very good for me. Number one, e-commerce. You could be working in Tesco, in Asda, in Sainsbury, in Spa. Okay, now the point here is this. You have all of these data set on all the purchase history or the daily sales, weekly sales, annual sales. You'll be able to analyze this data and get lots of insight about customer purchase history or sales pattern. Now, when you analyze this data, you'll be able to advise. It might just be the inventory team you'll be able to advise and say, don't stock this milk. People don't buy this one. People buy more of this product. Now, the good thing there is that instead of you stocking too much of these things and they get expired. Now, I, I'm giving you a very good example. I'm from this e-commerce background. My mom used to sell what we call provision. I'm in the UK right now, but I'm Nigerian and I grew up in Delta State, more specifically in Worry. And my mother used to sell in the market. Okay. Now, she sell like biscuit, like sweet, like sugar and all of those stuffs. Now, there are some of these that get expired in the shop, okay? And whenever this thing crosses your expiry date, it's a loss to our business. Now, but, but then what they do is they're doing some analysis in the head, and then they are also using experience and God's feelings. So when they go to buy stuff, they just buy stuff that maybe I invoke, or they feel this is going to be marketable, and then they bring it. Fortunately, some get sold, some don't get sold, some kind of expire and you lose money. Now, coming into data analysis, if you're going to look at what she do, like if I'm going to pick up that stuff that she's doing right now, I'm going to do a good analysis and look at which products 
usually sells a lot more and at what season and at what rates. And that's what I'm going to use to influence what she goes to Lagos to buy and stock up the shop. That's e-commerce. Even to the granular information, not just Asda or Sainsbury's, but as small as my mom's shop, I can actually practice the fact that I'm a data analyst to be able to advise her on how to go about stuffs. Number two, healthcare. You see, the UK, for instance, is doing lots of analysis when it comes to healthcare. While looking at the different areas where maybe there's issue, you know, if you're working in Aberdeen, where I stay in Aberdeen, and you're working in the health sector, and you notice that people are coming for a specific medication or a specific ailment that is not common in other areas, you need to analyze the data and then look if there are some patterns that might be causing these things. There might be some causation causing this thing. You need to be able to find these patterns. Or it might be medical history. You know, when you visit the doctor, they begin to ask you questions. And one thing about medical doctors is they are very good analysts, but we just don't look them like that. They are analyzing historical data. They ask you, does any of your family members have history of heart attack? Your father or your mother, do they have diabetes? No. Your father or your mother, do they have high blood pressure? No. Okay, this, they ask you lots of questions. They're actually gathering data. They are gathering data. And then they ask you to go and do a blood test. They are gathering data. They ask, if they ask you to go and do a urine test. They are gathering data. Essentially, what the doctors are doing, they are data analysts because they take all of this data, look at the data, analyze the data, and from there, they'll be like, okay, I think you've got typhoid. I think... Or I'm sure you would need to do this med take this medication, take this treatment or that treatment. Medical doctors, they are data analysts. Finance, stock market, economic indicators, you analyze these things. I did a job quite recently for a company in Edinburgh. And what we're doing is we're taking lots of electricity data and analyzing these things to be able to know the price trend of electricity data, when to buy and when to sell. And it's very connected with what you do in economic indicators and stock market data, when you want to know when to buy or when to sell. Why am I emphasizing this slide? So that everybody in this room, you can see value in data analysis as it concerns you. Social media, user engagement, sentiment analysis, you remember the election in the United States? I can't remember which of the main election, but there was an election in the United States where they were analyzing different data, maybe from Twitter, different tweets that people are sending to be able to know what is the pattern. What do you think or who do you think is going to win the election? And even if I go to Nigeria more specifically, in the last general election, there were lots of analysis from social media. And though some people feel like, oh, social media is not where you win election. Social media is not. But the truth is, the truth is, you need to get all of this data to analyze this data to know what exactly the people think, what exactly the people are saying, so you can be able to infer what the people would do. So that's the purpose of doing all of these things. You want to know what the people think, what the people are saying, and what might they do. And now it's going to affect you. So companies, governments, Policy makers, they are very, very focused on that. Looking at social media data, what are the people thinking about what we're doing? Transportation, you see GPS data, manufacturing, production line, quality control metrics, all of these are data analysis. Energy, sensor readings for power lines. Or if we go back to energy, in Nigeria, I was working in the energy sector and we're always capturing data. All we're interested in is for the crude oil to be in the pipeline safely from all of the states from all the way from River State, Bayesa State and everything going to Bonny Terminal, where, which is the safe point. Now, there's lots of analysis that you still need to do about this data. So then there's like a production dashboard where some persons are in the office in Potako. They're always looking at this dashboard. And the point is this, whenever there is any drop, maybe in the pressure or the flow rate, Whenever there is any major spike or dip, they begin to know that something is happening. So it's possible that you're flowing at a flow rate of, I'm not speaking to all engineers in this room, so maybe this particular bar is per day or the pressure of this bar or PSI or Pascal. And if there's a major dip, you know that, hang on a moment, 
if we are flowing from this manifold to this point, we are supposed to be at this rate. If it has dropped, it means some of our friends have punched out the part of the pipeline. Let's go investigate something. Now, this is data speaking to you. Now, let's talk about maintenance in the engineering sector as well. So there's what we call predictive maintenance, where you have lots of analysis you do to know when you need to do maintenance or not. Educational sector. Now, educational sector, where I work here in the UK as well, we always look at enrollment trends. Are people coming to study in our university? Are we going to make more money this semester or we're not making money? Now, there's a budget, School of Engineering, School of uh, Health Sciences, School of Computing. You need to make specific amount of money. Why are students not coming? That's an issue. You want to look at why are they not enrolling? And apart from that, student performance. Today, I just got, no, I got my scripts, I think, yesterday. And today, I got a call from the module coordinator and was like, as you're marking, we want to know which number did the students answer more. Now, remember what I'm trying to say. They've written an exam. We're marking the exam. Not only are we just looking at how many people pass, how many people fail. We want to look at which number because there are four questions to answer. No, I think six questions to answer four. So we want to see which ones did the student answer more. So we know that it's possible that this other section, maybe they don't understand or we're not presenting it well. All of them are answering only number four. Nobody's answering number five and number six. Maybe it's very difficult or whatever. So you see, everybody... In whatever you do, you look at the data. If you're a pastor, you're a pastor, you need to look at the data. It just depends on the data you're interested in. You might be interested in the data on how many persons are in your church. That's part of data. You're interested in how many people are born again. That's part of the data. Or you are interested in... Uh... Somebody said they can't hear anything. Oh, my goodness. Can you confirm if you also cannot hear anything? Uh, Dr. M, Mr. Tawo, you might need to monitor the chat for me, please. Somebody just said, I can't hear anything. I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay, great. Person okay, great. Check that device. So please just help me monitor the messages on the chat. Okay, that's fine. Okay. So I'm just giving you a very good different areas where data analysis works. Now, let's look at the workflow very, very quickly now. Number one, we're collecting data from different sources. You might be getting the data from maybe primary data. You are the one collecting the data from the people. You are downloading the data from anywhere. You're working in the oil and gas sector. You have a particular software that you're using to process maybe PTW or anything. You download this data in the form of CSV or you're working in the educational sector. Wherever you're a pastor, you take attendance every day, every Sunday, you take attendance. All of this is data collection. Now you need to begin to clean this data. You know, if you are a pastor and people write their names, there are sometimes they write mobile numbers that are wrong. All of these are different errors. You're working in the educational sector. You're collecting data. Some things are not right. You, wherever you're working in an NGO, you always get to clean this data, prepare this data for you to be able to analyze this data. Then you begin to do some exploration. Are there any patterns right now? You see, the UK where I stay right now, many of us are in the UK, there's lots of data analysis going on every day, the way the government are taking their decision. I was looking online and then I saw that when they started this healthcare COS visa, Nigerians that got a visa have risen by about 215% within about two, in less than two years, 215. So not only did it double, it even more than double. Now they're looking at all of these data. Now lots of people have come into the country on tier four visa, on skilled work visa, and then some of the social facilities or amenities in the country, they feel it's not sufficient for the rising population. And they are beginning to look for different ways to change one thing, change another thing. And now they are increasing the base amount of salary to like 38 grand. All of these things are coming from investigating the data, looking at the patterns, trying to get the trends and all of those. Just being able to see value. That's the thing I'm talking about. Well, you can transform this data in a couple of ways. And then you have data visualization. When you talk data, you don't just give numbers to management. You need to present this thing in visualization relevant to that particular use case. Now, these are general visualizations I just want to talk about. You could talk about Bashat used for comparing discrete categories, like if you're talking about sales by region, 
scatter plot, you can use this to get correlation between two numeric variables. And these are pie charts, which you can also, it's very close to what bar charts would do actually. So, but this one is in percentages. So you can know what percentage of the entire market share does this one have. Then line graphs can also be used mainly for trend. So I talked about coronavirus. So there's always line graph that tells you the trend, how these old teams are performing. And then we could talk about its maps, which can also give you correlation. This is very good to give you correlation, how these and that are correlating. And histogram can give you distribution. Why did I show this? So when you're representing data, you begin to know what you should use for this particular scenario and the other scenario. Now, three main things for principles of visualization. Make it clear, make it simple, make it relevant. There's no need to make it too complex. Make it clear, make it simple, and make it relevant. I've said a lot about data analysis now. And now I've been talking about this, the, the field, the general stops about data analysis, all this while. Now I want to speak to you now. I want to begin to speak to you. So are you ready for me to speak to you right now? So if you're ready, can I give, can I hear you just put something in the chat and say, yes, you're ready for me to speak to you now. So I want to speak to you. Yes, yes, somebody's ready for me to speak now. So there are some skill sets you need. And that's the first thing I want to talk about. Number one, you need an analytic skill. Okay, as a data analyst, you'll be responsible for interpreting data and making sound decisions based upon your findings. So you need to be able to analyze, look at situations and analyze. And whenever I tell people, yeah, about data analysis, I let people know that everybody, you analyze data one way or the other, whether you like it or not. And I'm going to make my point clear to you. So. We all have taken decisions in our life and you always analyze. Right from your secondary school days when you want to have a friend, you have different people that could be your friend. You look at this one compared to the other one and choose who will be your friend. Right from when you want to choose a course, right from when you want to go to uni, right from when you want to have a girlfriend, you have lots of girls in the class. You're looking at which one is pretty or which one is not pretty. Even from when you want to marry, you have lots of persons you could actually marry. You are being analytic. This one can cook or this one is not beautiful. Or You are a woman, you want to marry a man. I need a guy to be tall, to be huge, to be handsome and fair in complexion. You are actually being a data analyst. So we all get to analyze. So I, I want you to understand the fact here is this, that we all have got this thing in us. One way or the other, you've got it in you. So what I'm trying to say is, number one, you want to look in yourself and say, yes, I actually have got it. I've got good analytic skills because I've taken decisions all my lifetime. And before I take any decisions, I want to weigh this. I want to look at the pros and cons of my decisions. That is data analysis. And then technical skills is now the next level. While you are just using very little data, you're analyzing it in your head to take decisions, but now you're, you, you're going to be analyzing big amount of data set. So you need some technical skills, which I'll talk about in my next slide. SQL, Python, Arrow, Excel, and data visualizations like Tableau, like Power BI, and all that. So this is now the next level. But I want everybody to know that you all have got analytic skills in you because you've analyzed issues. You're in this webinar tonight. You could have been watching Netflix, but you compared and said like, hang on a moment. I could watch Netflix for two hours. I could attend this seminar for two hours. Cost benefit analysis. I think it's better if I attend this seminar. Maybe there'll be something good for me to learn and I won't watch Netflix or I'm not going to watch the football. You know, Arsenal will be playing some football match, maybe like past eight. Should I stay back and watch some football match or watch a replay? Let me attend this webinar. Maybe I'll watch the football match. Everybody get to analyze data, okay? Now, the nice thing is technical skills. Yeah, you need to learn some things. And at Intel and Navis Careers, we pride ourselves in the fact that we get to teach you all of these things to build the technical competency that you require. Then communication skills. Now, data analysts, clearly you need to be able to communicate, you know? You need to be able to communicate these things to stakeholders. Now, I'm not trying to say you need to be a motivational speaker, an eloquent speaker, but you need to be able to 
be somebody that can communicate and influence. It's two things tied together. So I, I, I don't like to always say somebody that can just communicate your findings. You want to be able to know that. You need to be able to communicate and influence. And I also like to go to the granular detail of this thing that we all can communicate. I've got some children in my house and they can analyze issues and tell me why it should be this or why it should not be that. In your class, you've been able to communicate, you've been able to talk, and you've been able to influence based upon one reason or the other. That's exactly what I'm talking about. You need this. And then attention to details. Remember, you're analyzing data. You are looking for patterns. You're trying to advise stakeholders, senior management. So you need to pay good attention to details to be able to communicate these things to them so you don't miss anything and you don't make mistakes. Some of the skill set very quickly. Number one, programming language like Python, like Arrow, like SQL. SQL is SQL for you to be able to get data from the databases. Arrow and Python, they are used to manipulate and do lots of analysis from exploratory data analysis even to predictive modeling. You can use Python to do all of that and Arrow as well. And some statistical analysis tools like SPSS, SAS, Excel, and MATLAB, you can use for different kind of statistical modeling for you to be able to derive necessary insight to advise decision. And then visualization tools like Tableau, Power BI, Google Data, and Zoho, you'll be able to present all of these data in a way that is digestible. Tonight, I'm going to do a quick demo in one of these visualization tools. So at Intel and Navis, we'll finish this training with Power BI. So we train people mainly on Power BI and Tableau. So today, I'm going to do a very quick demo to show you what I'm trying to talk about in data visualization, because you need to be able to visualize all of these data sets in different kind of charts and visuals and be able to do storytelling to put some narrative to all of these things. Now, we could talk about database management as well, like MySQL, Postgre, MongoDB. All of these things are very good when you're going to another level. And then machine learning, where you do some predictive analytics. Then collaborative tools, Jira, Trello, Confluence, SharePoint, Asana, and all of that. So what we do here is you, 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 you get to learn these things. Not everything. If you look at what I've shown to you, you will notice that you, you feel it's a lot, but you don't need to like learn all of them. It's like when you go to uni and you have different courses, but what you actually do after work is just one niche area in that. So you don't necessarily have to master all of these skill set, all of these toolkit, but then you need to have understanding, a kind of general understanding. If you look here, for example, if you know Power BI, you can easily transition to W or Google, Data Studio, or Zoho, or any other visualization. That's how it works. So if you know SPSS, Excel, you can easily, like MATLAB, Python, Arrow, they are test-based. So if you understand how coding works, you'll be able to transfer this knowledge and understanding to different tools for programming. And the same thing with all of these different ways you can query from your database. And all of this is when you go to lots of machine learning, deep learning, artificial neural network, you're using all of these. These are kind of more advanced things we use for predictive modeling, pattern recognition, and all of that. But this is key for everybody. So everybody gets to know about this because you need all of this for communication and collaborating. Now I'm getting to the interesting bit. I say I'm talking about you. What are the jobs in data analysis? That's the interesting bit. Yesterday, Mr. Chinda was talking a lot about the money. You notice today I'm not talking so much about the money right now. I'm speaking about analysis, analysis, analysis. Okay, let's see what we could talk about right now. What are some of the roles that you can actually become? You can be a business data analyst. So where you are responsible for analyzing all of the business operations, and how do you analyze this thing? You get all of the data. You are identifying areas where you could improve, where you could do better, different things that you could make the organization, the business do better. You can be a marketing analyst. So you're kind of analyzing customer data. You want to identify trends. You want to identify patterns and get insights. Tonight, I'm going to show you like an e-commerce data set where you'll be able to look at 
maybe different customers and or different products and you say which is better which is not better and you can come up with decisions and be like what do you think we can do what do you think we should not do or whatever financial analyst so analyzing lots of financial data you can work in insurance company for example so you you can work in maybe stock broken firm insurance bank different places when you are a data analyst the unique thing is you can work in different organizations Personally, I've got a background in engineering. My first degree is in geology. My master's is in petroleum engineering. And then my doctorate is also in engineering. I've worked in the engineering sector. I've worked in educational sector. I've worked in health sector. I've worked in government sector. So, so when you have this analytic flair, when they give you any data set, you just need to do some upskilling to get some level of subject matter competence. In, or, or understanding in whatever sector you're dealing with. And then you can pick up the data, crunch the data, and generate different insights that are valuable for business decision or policymaker decision. Now, data scientists are people that use lots more or do lots more of predictive analytics. You can be doing lots of machine learning, or you could be doing lots of, some automation, some pattern recognition, deep learning, you know? So that's more like what you do in data science. And if you're a data analyst using Excel, using Power BI, using Tableau, and you have an understanding of Python, you can easily move to being a data scientist that you dwell a lot more using Python or Arrow as the case may be. Apart from all of this, you can also be a system analyst. You can be a research analyst. You can be an operation analyst. You can be a researcher, a statistician. I'm going to go to this website in a moment, and then we'll see a couple of things. So my slides will soon be finished in about four or five minutes, and then I'm going to take you to the website where I have some things to show to you as well. So just keep track with me. I'm going to take you to this website and show you some trends that you guys need to see. Now. I'll show you this trend just now with these slides. And this just gives you an idea of what the jobs are. So you can see the number of jobs, which if you just go in right now, IT professional, data-related roles, tech industries right now. So this is the year 2020, 2021, 2022. So you can see what you see here is clearly you can see a pattern. And the pattern here or the trend here is that this is an upward trend. In 2020, it was year. In 2021, it was year. And this is 2022. So you can clearly see an upward trend in the amount of jobs in this sector. That's number one thing I want you to take away. Now, if you break the UK down, if you break the UK down, you can see Greater London is always at the top of this. Greater London is always at the top. So you can see from the year 2020, 21, and 22, you can see a continuous rise in the number of opportunities, in the number of IT professionals that we have. So if you break it, the UK completely, so you go to the Southeast UK, you also see, so that's the second region that has got lots of opportunities down until East Midlands and then Wales. So the point right now is this, depends on your location, so you see the number of opportunities that are there for you. But I also like to tell you that lots of these rules are also open to people outside of this region because you can work remotely. My office is in England and I've never been to my office. I'm working remotely. The other time my office was in Edinburgh and I never went to Edinburgh. A while ago, my office was in Leeds and I never went to Leeds. So I have an office. I have like an ID which I don't really get to use because I'm working remotely. You understand what I'm saying? So do not mind, even if you see these numbers as showing this, it doesn't mean you have to stay here, but it's giving you an idea that there are jobs and there are lots of jobs in this space. Now let's keep looking at the trends. You know, I'm a data analyst and I'm talking data analysis. It won't make sense if I don't show you data, you know? It won't make sense if I don't get to show you different visualizations. So let's enjoy visualizations for a minute. Now, what are some of the different roles we could talk about? Different skills that are in demand. So you could see how the demand for data analysis has risen from 2020 to 2022, and it continues rising. At the end of this year now, we begin to see some kind of updated, updated uh, chart, and then you will see the continuous rise. Data engineers, data scientists, data managers, and architects as well. Now, look at the different sectors you can possibly get your 
So telecoms, media, technology company, so they are the top of it. So different technology, media, and telecoms, so you can see the percentage, so more than 40% of people, they are working in this sector. Then banking is also is second year. Professional services, insurance, retail, up until you get to energy. So the point is, wherever sector you think you're coming from, whatever subject matter you think you already have, your value as a data analyst cannot be overemphasized because businesses now, organizations now, governments now, they want the data to speak. They want to take decisions based upon the data. And that is the value you're bringing on board. They've been taking decisions before just by gut feelings, but you want to tell them the data so they can make data-driven decisions. What's the pay like? What's the pay like? London pays the highest. That's the truth. So if you're working in London as a data analyst, so you can expect permanent roles between 55 up until 75. Some persons get up to 80, 90,000 per annum. It depends on the level you've got to anyways. So it depends on the level you've got to. So this is business intelligence. They are very connected. So they are very, very connected. Then Southeast and generally, if you go out in the region, lots of more places in the UK, you can begin to think from like 45,000 to 55,000, 60,000. Business intelligence analysts like 55, 60, 65,000. Now, if you're doing contracts, excuse me, So what contract means is you're not a permanent staff in that organization. You get paid per day. So your job is per day. So you might have a job and say you're working for only three months. Or they say you're working for only six months, for example. And in that case, you're getting paid per day. And this is more like the rate. Think about it. So if you're getting this kind of amount, so in a month, so your salary is like maybe 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, upward to even 10,000 in a month. And these are very possible. And I'll go to the website and show you these things for a fact. I know some persons are joining us from the United States because we're analyzing the data from those that have registered. And it's not only UK numbers. So there are people from the US. So I thought I'll show you some US numbers as well. Why not? In the US, for example, so the average for an entry-level data analyst average, mind you, is like 62 grand per annum. So you can get from like 55, even up to like 70 grand. And all of this information, they are there online. You can verify every claim here. So if you're just starting or you've got like two years experience, you can be able to get roughly about 50 grand. So 50,000 US dollar per annum. Okay, now when you move to small senior level, you climb to around 85 and above 88 and all that. You begin to earn that kind of good amount of money when you've been in the field for like five to seven years and you've developed yourself as well. And it's also quite instructive to know from indeed that there are more roles, just checking about 43,000 jobs available. So the point is this, not only is it lucrative, there's lots of job that's available for you. And I'm gonna show you a couple of these things right now. But the last part of my discussion before I take you to the website and do a very, very short and quick demo is going to be what's the journey to becoming a data analyst? Number one, the first journey to becoming a data analyst is to get education, get training. And while the, the, the education will sound like I'm saying, go get a bachelor's, go get a master's, all of those are fantastic. I have a bachelor's, I have a master's, I have a PhD as well. So I know what the value of education is. But the education I'm speaking here is more focused on data analysis, okay? So I'm speaking more on more data analysis centric education that is specific and it is tuned, it is focused on you getting a job in the sector. So the, the, the training is structured in such a way that you're trained on the specific things that you do as a data analyst and you have the rare opportunity to simulate some of the stuff that you would do on the job, which you won't get in normal classroom degree education. So that's a unique thing here. And at Intel and Navis Careers, we have a very robust data analytics course, 
where we'll help you to train on most of the necessary skills you require for technical and also the non-technical skill as well. We have one-to-one -one mentoring that you can get and then you continuously get support in the community as you grow in your career. Now, apart from just the education, so you can have a kind of internship with bigger organizations, but apart from that, you also get to do some work experience opportunity as part of our training offers. So I've put in some examples of organizations where you can get internship. The unique thing about internship is that you, can, you have the opportunity to be in a real world environment without the pressure and responsibility of the actual job. They know that you are learning, you are trying to master the skill, you're still coming up, so you don't get too much of pressure, too much of expectation, or too much of responsibility. But if you are very proactive and intentional, you see yourself developing and growing within that period. What else again? You can go for some data analyst certification. Now, the point about a certification is that it validates your expertise. It enhances your professional credibility and then opens more opportunity for you, okay? It doesn't necessarily give you the job. If you ask me, experience and certification, experience outweighs certification, but then it's, I have certifications, I've written certifications, and I still would do more. It validates your expertise, your knowledge in this sector. Now, some I would recommend is like these ones that I've put on the screen here, if you want, you can go for this to be able to validate your knowledge, your expertise in the sector. And the last part is this. Not only should you just get the knowledge, not only should you just think you know it, you need to build a portfolio. At Intelligence Careers, all of our trainees, we are helping them build a portfolio, which will be hosted on our company website. So the idea is... When they've gone the training, they've built lots of beautiful visualizations, lots of analysis like this. So we'll get all of this hosted on our company website, and then they can copy the URL and put it in their CV. So potential employers, when they look at their CV, can easily go to this website and see what exactly you've done before in the space. It's not just what you can do, but what you have done. That's one thing I like to tell people. When you go for job interviews, you don't just want to go and be saying, I can do this, I can do that, I can do this, I can do that. You want to say, I've done this before, I've done that before, and I believe I can do that other one now. So that's the way things go. What have you done before that will influence what you can do for us? Not, well, I was taught, but I think I can do it. No, 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 no. Tell me what you've done before. So I can use that to assess what I think you can do for us as an organization. So. This is the last part in what I want to talk about. You need to clearly build a portfolio of the projects you've worked upon. This is my last slide. The next one, I'm going to a website. So I'm going to stop the sharing now, and I want you to drop any comment on the chat while I go to a website now. Drop any comment on the chat for like 10 seconds, please. Oh, somebody said, great. That's a good one. Thank you. Okay, drop any comment in the chat for a minute. Okay, so now I'm going to share my screen one more time. Okay, good. So I believe you can see my screen now. Anybody confirming that you can see my screen, please? Yes, we can see you. Perfect. Can, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for confirming. Now, look at this. Now, look at this. This is what you do as a data analyst. Yeah. And we're going to do this thing very, very simple. What you see here is very simple because this tool here that I'm using for tonight's demo, the tool I'm using for tonight's demo is Zoho, Zoho Analytics, okay? So we train on Power BI. We train on Tableau. We train on Excel as well. We train on Python for visualization as well. And Zoho, also we can... Do this stuff, but I just say to myself, let me popularize Zoho today. Let me use Zoho for my demo today. Now, look at this. This is Operating Profit Dashboard. So, this is a company that I've got lots of data that want to analyze this data. So, you take all of the data. This is in a spreadsheet. I can show you in an Excel format just now. And then you can begin to see what has happened. So, you can see this screen now telling a story that you were here before as a last year. Now, you've risen. Oh, that's very good. 
This is the total operating profit and all of this. So this kind of visualization is what we train you to build using different tools. Zo Analytics, W, Power BI, Excel, and even Python as well. You'll be able to build this. So you, you're able to advise, you're able to advise different stakeholders as to what is happening. So this is region. Now you can see the region that is doing well. So these are the things that stakeholders want to see, not just showing them the numbers, but they want to see, and you use this visualization to be able to tell them and say, okay, that's very good. So which product now, or which product is doing very well? You come here again, you're still looking at region. There's lots of charts here, which you can build very quickly. Now there are different tools that can do this, okay? Different tools can do this. But the one I'm using tonight is Zoo. But this can be very, very simple. Okay? Now, the point I want you to know is you need to learn the fundamentals, the basics for you to be able to work with these things. But let me just demonstrate this very quickly. Now, look at this. I'm starting completely new, mutable. The first thing is this. I want to bring in the data. So you can bring in different kinds of data. So let me bring in this Excel. It's Excel. I'm going to say, let me just call this training. Okay, I can give a description and it's going to be CSV format. And then I'm going to choose the file from wherever it is in my computer. So let's go and look for something now. Uh, let me look for the data set. I've got different data sets. Don't mind the folder. I've got different stuff in the folder. Uh, why don't I like this? My masterclass data set. So the people in the training, they know I always start with the masterclass data set. Sometimes it's just difficult for my height to pick it. Yeah, I think this is what I'm looking for. So this is what we call you are importing the data now. So the data has been imported into the system. Okay, so this is the visualization tool I'm using. So the first thing is I import the data. Now this is like the table name. So this says that the first row is all of the different headers. So first row contains column names, I'll say yes. And this is the date format. If I'm happy with the date format, if I'm not, you can easily change. You can play with it the way you like it, either US or different style. And then all of the different column, you want to see if the format is what it is. So this is plain text. I don't need to change anything. So this is positive numbers, but I can put this as plain text actually, because I don't have anything to do with these numbers, you know? So those that have gone through our training, you understand when we talk about primary key or foreign key, that all of these things, they are not stuff you can do some mathematical manipulations on. And then you look at the date, it's in date format. This is plain test as well. This is uh, New York, you see all of that. Okay, plain test, currency, United States, positive numbers. So if you're happy with all of that, if you're not happy, you can easily change the kind of data type, but we're happy if everything is fine now. If you have different other tables, you know, when we did the SQL training, the trainer, Mr. T, talked about joining different tables together and doing different things. And then I did a training on Power BI on data models where you have this primary key, this foreign key, and you can bring them together to model your data. But we're not doing all of that tonight. We're doing something straightforward and simple. So I can create. So this works like an artificial intelligence uh, visualization tool that takes your data try to understand your data in its head and suggest different visualizations for you. So Power BI goes through lots of process, but we can do some work here. But I just want to show you this, like, um, like an AI system. It's very automated that just understands what we want. So I'm just going to say create. So this guy is going to think and think and try to figure some things out for me. So that's what this would usually do for us. So this is what we used in getting that visualization that you saw now, okay? So you see all of the different data sets that I have. say auto-generate reports. So analysis can analyze and instantly generate reports for you. We can customize this, we can do lots of things, but it's gonna just on the fly. So let's see what it does. Yeah, it's gonna, yeah, keep processing, keep processing, keep processing, keep processing. And here we go. Bam, 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 bam. Everything is there for us to see. If that makes sense, drop a shot for me and let me know it makes sense. Just say, makes sense, makes sense, makes sense. Does it make sense to you? So this is the very first thing I want to show to you. Yes, exactly. This is the first thing I want to show to you. 
So you can actually change it now. So this is the system that has auto-generated this, but I can start playing with this thing. And I'm like, I'm going to moment. I want to change this data type. I can change this. So I can now come in as a human being now and say, okay, I want to try this thing differently. Sort by this, and I'm going to say descending. So I can start doing it the way I want, you see? And if I look at this, I'm like, okay, I want to change the way this one looks. Let me try something different. So you see what I'm saying? So I can start doing lots of work on it. You understand now? So I can begin to rework it, come to this, and I'm like, okay, I want this. So if you want to make it like big, you can just blow it up, like zoom in or zoom out kind of thing. And then you can start changing the, 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 the kind of visualization that you want to use for that particular use case. So if you're happy and everything looks good, then you can share this with stakeholders and then you can begin to monitor this as a dashboard and update this thing. It can get more data. And as the data comes, you begin to refresh these things or you do more and more analysis. So you see, we, we, we can start talk and talk and talk about the insights here that you can see. And now you can advise your stakeholder and begin to say, hang on a moment, um, I think this retailer is giving us more money. What about if we focus on this retailer or the other retailer? Now let's see where we're making more money. Total profit is in New York. We're not making a lot of money here. What can we do? Let's see what's happening in New York. Maybe there are some way we can influence what's happening here in Los Angeles based upon what the people in New York are doing. Now, these are different things you can start advising. And you, you, you can see the trend from this time to this time, how we have performed. You can see a kind of pattern. I'm like, why did we go up and come now? Oh, hang on a moment. This is July. Maybe this is summer period. So during the summer months, we always have lots of sales. I get the idea. What that means is we shouldn't stock so much during this period. Let's put more stuffs here, less here. So we're going to put more here because you can see the pattern that there's always a high amount here. There's always high amount here. So we could advise the people from the inventory department on what they should do. All of these are insights. You don't just come up with these graphs. You need to look at the insight, the value that you'll be able to advise. So this is very key. And Everybody gets to use data. Everybody gets to use data. So even if you're working like digital marketing is one of the stuff that we do. And then I said to myself, I'm going to show you something about digital marketing before I progress from dashboard. Now, if you look at our social media, for example. So this is a tool we use to monitor our social media. This is a video we did yesterday. So this is a video yesterday when we did the stuff with Koshinda. At the end of the video, my daughter just popped into my office and her face is showing here. So this is Elsie. So don't mind Elsie showing her face. But this is what I want to show to you guys. Now you can clearly see how much people like it, how much people have watched it, the amount of engagement, the amount of impression. So we can see how popular our videos are, how many people have watched our videos, unique views 104 just within yesterday and now that we have this on Facebook. And that is why Dr. M.M. was like, this thing needs to go on Facebook. Why? Because we noticed that people need to watch this on Facebook as well. We are taking the decision to be on Facebook based upon the data. You get the point now? Now I can see many of the things, the age range. So I can see the age range, the demography here, that lots of people, they are in this age range that are very much interested in this, okay? Now I can see the region where they are watching from on Facebook. Lots of people from Scotland, they spend this amount of hours, England, Lagos, Nigeria, Delta State. You see, there are many other countries I can see. The point is everything is about the data. So looking at all of this data now, when we discuss digital marketing, we can begin to take decisions and be like, hang on, we should pattern our marketing this way. We should pattern our training this way. If it it's from the data, it is not what I feel. It is not because I love you or I don't love you. It is what the data says. I love the data and not you. If the data says don't do this, no, I'm not going to do that because I'm very, very obedient to my data set. Now let's go to the different jobs in the space. When you have the time, go to this website, itjobswash.co.uk and just type in, let it be that you're looking at permanent jobs right now, type in data analysis, and then you can see what's happening. Okay? These are the different kind of description. So like the people that are in our training just now, you can be data analysts, 
Asia Data Analyst, Data and SQL, Lead Data Analyst, Senior Junior Master. I mean, just name it, Insight, Pricing Data Analyst, Data Business Analyst, Business Data Analyst. Just graduate. There's a lot you can actually be in this space. That's number one point. Not only do I want to show you that, there are lots of jobs right now. Now, look at the different jobs in the space. Now, for this one, it's got about 1,100. 1,100. Look at this one, 2,000 plus analyst job. Now, look at the very top one as well. This is You can see lots of opportunities. And then you can see how it's been ranking year on year. Now, if I come here now and I start looking at those ones that I just click for data analysis, lots of job right now that you can start chasing. Just be intentional about your own success. I can't overemphasize this thing. I said to you just now that the amount of people from Nigeria that came into the UK with the healthcare visa has risen by 215%. Now, my desire for you is even if you come with whatever visa, that you grow within the shortest possible time from where you are just now. You need to move. You're not a tree. Lots of persons, they stay on a job that you're not happy, you're not fulfilled, and you're there one year, two years, three years. All you need to do, shake up yourself. You can do this thing. Upskill yourself, grow yourself. And if you can grow yourself, you can grow your pocket. If you cannot grow your mind, you can never grow your money. It's as simple as that. If I want my money to grow, I just sit back and I grow my mind and I think of what can I do? How can I do it? What can I, imp let me invest in this. Let me invest in that. Let me upskill in this. Let me demonstrate myself here. And then you can grow your money. Before I came for a doctorate program, I was working in Nigeria, but I was a contract staff and the money was small. I wanted to grow my money. And the first thing I did was to grow my mind. I came to upskill to become a doctor, a doctor of philosophy. Now I'm proudly called Dr. Yakubu. And my money has grown. I don't have a, it, it's clear, it's clear. What I was getting in Nigeria before I moved and I became a data analyst, I get more than times 10 of it. For real, you need to grow your mind to grow your money. All these things we are showing you, they are all possibilities. We're not telling you things that are not possible or things that are not real, but things that are clearly real. And you can see all the live jobs here. You look at the pay, you see what they are going to give. Which one do you like? Which one you don't like? You go for these things, you know. I can click and click, and then you see a lot of them, data and relation, your supply chain. You've been working in maybe e-commerce, Tesco, Asda, or your procurement. You can be supply chain data analyst, insight data analyst. I mean, whatever, whatever sector you've been before, you can try to rearrange yourself. You can try to pivot on what you already have to be who you want to become. That's a fact about these things. Now, I've shown you this website. I'm going to show you a different website now. You, you see, these amounts, they are real, and they are for you to come and grab. Now, this is another website I want to show to you. If I say I'm a data analyst, for example, let me just put data analyst now. And then I'm going to say, OK, what are the jobs for the past seven days? Yes, OK, all jobs. Just leave everything as it is, and let's see what we've got. Uh, we're going to get like over a thousand here. You see what I'm saying? So you want to work as a data analyst. This is 50, 55. This is 40, 50. This is 500 pounds. This is per day. 500 pounds in Nigerian context is like 700 grand per day. Okay. All of these things we do, we talk about these things in our training. What is IRO 35 and all that. We tell our people all these things as well. Okay, if I come back to this website as well, I've talked about permanent. I can change this to contract rules. You can see the contract rules here. And then you also see different jobs that are there. You see, you see different jobs that you can start chasing. So the point I'm trying to say is this, there are opportunities there for you to grab, but you need to work on yourself before you can go out there to grab these things. It's not free. It is not easy to grab because if it is easy, everybody is going to grab it. I like to always tell people, I teach in the uni and I tell people, 
It's not easy. If it is easy, everybody is going to be there. The fact that it's not easy is why you need to make conscious efforts. Be intentional. Be proactive. Go for it, knowing fully whether you can do it. I went for a seminar and the guy was working on mindset change. And then he said, anything that has been done before by humans, it then means that there's a possibility you can do it. Think about it. In as much as somebody has done it, then there is the likelihood that I can do it. I just need to ask more questions, follow what they've done, or try a couple of things. It means there is the likelihood that it is. But if it's not been done before, of course, people have done what has never been done before. But that one, there's actually no blueprint. There is no pathway. You, you, you get what I'm trying to say? And what we do here at Intel Analysis is we train you on all of these things, and all of our trainings are recorded, and then people can watch them on YouTube. So this is a YouTube space for only the people that are training with us. So we have like a private YouTube where it's every, if, this is private. If you go on our YouTube channel, you can see this, but only all the people that are learning right now, they can see because this is private session. So all of the trainings we do week one, week two, week three, up until week nine, everything, they are all there. We do both on technical and soft skill as well. And then you have all of the different toolkits. So every person that comes, you have Microsoft Office at IntelliNavis.com. And then you have access to Teams, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Power BI, just name it. So the point I'm going to leave you with now before we go to Q&A is that this thing has been done before, and it means you can do it. That's all for me. Thank you very much for your time and attention. That is Thank you. fantastic. That Thank is highly doctor. fantastic, doctor. Thank you, Doug. <laughs> You have done justice to the presentation tonight, and we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. So, the general public, if you have any questions, please, you can please indicate. You can go to the, the, to the meeting chat, drop your question, and the doctor will be available to answer whatever your questions are. Thank you very much for your time, doctor. You're welcome. You're welcome. So if you have any question about data analysis generally uh, or about how we do our training at Intel, and I will just ask a question. You can put up your hand if you want to talk or you can drop it in the chat if you would rather send it in test format. But we're very much happy to respond to all of your questions. We're very much happy to respond to all of your questions right now. Somebody, Samuel, Abu has dropped a question there. When is the class starting? So the class is starting on the 13th of January. That's when we're starting the full class. So the class runs for eight weeks, okay? Uh, for two months, so we're having sessions every Saturday for like four hours and every Thursday for like one and a half hour. And after two months, you now have three months to begin to practice, build your portfolio projects and get all of your projects hosted on our website so you can share the URL health with potential employers. So it, it, it's a five months period. So we train you on both CV, how to answer interview questions, help with your CV. And even after the whole process, when you get job, we also have the opportunity that you can speak to us, communicate with us and get ongoing mentoring as you get your job and you progress, okay? So any questions? Yeah, I see a comment there from Eugene. I would like to begin a career on data analysis. Yeah, you're very much welcome. Yeah, it's a good thing to see that uh, somebody finds the career kind of something attractive for you. Yeah. Any question from anybody right now? Any question or any comment, please? Yeah, You're waiting uh, for questions. Yeah, I have a question. Thank you very much. Yeah. Please go ahead. Uh, nice meeting you. This is Kingsley. Yeah. Um, very interesting uh, presentation. Thank you very much. And I think uh, I thank uh, Oga Austin for inviting me because he sent me the thing. So um, I'm glad to listen to you because, you know, we all work in pipeline before now, before you met and all that. So, so much time we for you meant what I say. So I think uh, what you said is true. Um high time will 
left where we are and move on to something else. You know, I think uh, from what you presented, I'm very, very impressed. I think uh, the right direction to go. And uh, I would like to be part of the training by January. Um, by God's grace. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. So, yeah. So, our training starts on the 13th of January. So, usually we have this free session. So, we do demo on different skills. So, we always run this thing, so you're always free to join, to invite other persons as well. Like tomorrow, uh, we'll be discussing on business analysis. And the speaker for tomorrow, I saw him on the call. I don't know if he's still, yeah, he's on the call. So if you see that name, Gregory Dabo, is our speaker for tomorrow. Do you want to say hello to the house, please? Yes, I am. Um, hi, everyone. How are you doing? Um, I, hope, I hope you can hear me clearly. Yeah, we can hear you. Yes, 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 yes. yeah, I'm, 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 I'm really excited to, to speak on business analysis. Um, and obviously, I, I wouldn't go into as much detail as my esteemed colleague here, Dr. Yakubu, um, has gone. Um, but um, more from an industry perspective, um, you know, I would be discussing BM business analysis more from an industry perspective, you know, looking at some of the roles, looking at some of the different skills that skill sets that would be required, um, you know, while working as a business an 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 analyst. And, um, you know, the importance of said skill sets, you know, how important they are, you know, while you're in the different industries in terms of navigating different roles and stuff. So, yeah, I'm, 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 look, I'm very excited and looking forward to speaking to you guys cool. tomorrow as well. Thank you very much, Greg. And for some persons that will be joining in January, that would be studying business analysis. So you get to meet Greg in a lot more details next year. And those that will be training on data analysis, yeah, you're going to be my good person and we're going to spend lots of time together. And Mr. T is also on this call. He's going to do lots of training for you in SQL and Python as well. And yeah, yeah. So yeah, excited already about tomorrow. Okay, perfect, perfect. Yeah, tomorrow Greg is going to take us on business analysis journey.